Hello and welcome to the video. This is my monthly update video. Now, I did the first one of these last month. Thank you to everyone that came back to me around that. It's an opportunity for me to kind of get all the things that are waiting to go through into videos and stuff that's already locked and loaded and talk about them and to give a general update on what's going on. So nothing in this that needs a full video isn't going to get one. This is just a bit of a sneak peek to let you know what's coming. So in the pile, let's start with this. This is the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2. Now, this Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 is the latest iteration of a range of quads from Emacs that is just fantastic. I'm a massive fan of these. I prefer these actually to classic Tiny Whoops. Now, the big difference with this, as you can see, is it's a complete redesign from the previous version. Uh, the frame is a lot tougher. The camera has been upgraded. This one has a little Nano 2 in from Runcam. We'll have a look at that as a separate camera in a moment. Uh, and it flies absolutely beautifully. Looks like Emacs has definitely been listening to all the feedback and has made kind of the ultimate version. This is available now. I'll put a link in the description, but there is going to be a full video talking about this one because it definitely deserves it. Next thing to talk about then is the latest version of something that I looked at at the end of last year. This is the Isheen LAL 5. Now the original version was 6S, still flew very nice on 4S, but there was a couple of things that needed to be tweaked. Uh, some of the construction in it wasn't brilliant. All the components were really nice, but it was put together by somebody that uh, I think hadn't quite yet got the hang of soldering. A couple of other issues around grounding with the boards at the back as well but this new version is a 4s version so i'll be looking at this in a video and comparing it to see how much Isheen was listening to the feedback from the pilots of that initial 6s version to see how they've changed how it's all built out now going back to the cameras there are a couple of new cameras out from Runcam uh, Runcam don't ever seem to sleep they're always bringing out latest and greatest versions the two latest versions that I'm going to talk about here the first one is this one here this is the Runcam Racer 3 weighing about five and a half grams and is optimized interestingly for OLED goggles about 160 degree field of view which is probably on the edge of what I would personally like again I'll do another video showing some of the footage of this uh, but it's a really nice camera I, I'm a fan of the racers actually I like the uh, the image that you get from them so I'm interested to see what difference it makes in things like the HDO2 goggles that I've been using as my daily drivers for the past couple of months the other Runcam camera that I've got in to have a look at is this one here this is the Runcam Nano 2 um, with improved colours and contrast. It's a 700 TVL CMOS camera and is ideal for things like toothpick builds. Next thing in the list is a slightly wacky one. Uh, this is, I'm calling it an Emacs motor wrench because it kind of is. Um, it's a slightly daft thing to have in the list, but it's something that I saw and have got in and am using. Now, I do tend to find that I tend to cut my hands when I'm taking props off, particularly if they're quite stiff and they've shattered. Trying to get the props off with the prop nuts that we have these days, um, it can dig into your hand. So having this along with a little prop wrench can make a big difference. Um, not going to do a full video on this. I'll put a link down below, but this is a fab little thing and it will save you cutting your fingers to shreds if you use particularly hard props. I am also going to be doing a video or two on this thing here. This is the TBS Fusion module. I've been using this now for three or four months and had some really good experience with it. The technology actually inside has been written by the team at Brain FPV. The technology inside is very similar to the latest generation of diversity modules, things like the Rapid Fire and things like the Trudy X 4.0, where they're listening to both the antennas all the time and combining the image from both signals rather than just switching between one or the other. Now, there is some cool stuff that it does that I can't talk about yet, but as soon as I can, I'll put the video up. While we're on the subject of goggles, there'll also be a video up this weekend about this thing here. This is the Immersion RC PowerPlay. Now, when I first got this in, I really wasn't sure what it was or how it was going to work because it is a DVR, but it's got batteries in it. And actually, the way to think about it is a battery pack that also records in H.264 format. And that H.264 format, what you do is you just plug it into the side of your goggles and it powers the goggles and also 
uh, record the DVR footage in a much higher quality than you will get internally in the goggles themselves. Now, I wasn't sure about this, but I, now part of my standard HDO kit that I take to the field, uh, one, because I tend to do lots of videos for review, but two, because I like the on and off way that you can just turn the goggles on and off, and the DVR footage is so much nicer. So you won't have to wait too long for the video on that particular product. A couple of radios that are going to be coming up in the next six, five, six weeks, maybe. Uh, one I can't talk about yet. The other one is the Radio Master TX16S. I think I've managed to get my hands on one of these. Uh, it looks at first glance like a Jumper T16 Pro, but it is different. And there are a number of very key differences on this that should make it a really interesting radio. OpenTX powered again, uh, has Hall Effect gimbals, upgraded switches, slightly deeper case with better grips, external SD card, bigger battery bay, um, two exposed UARTs at the bottom to plug things into. I'm probably more excited about those external UARTs than anything because that would allow us to potentially connect other things to the radio, um, maybe auxiliary telemetry radios, maybe a GPS unit so the uh, radio can know its own location. There's l the possibilities are endless. So stay with me for the video when that comes in. Uh, I'm really excited to get my hands on that. I stopped doing videos on the Jumper T16 with the exception of the one I did earlier this week on Flashing Open TX because of all the quality issues that I was getting reports of with the T16. And then to top it all off, mine started to misbehave and switches started going dead and stuff as well. So uh, really excited to see this thing in action. There's going to be a build that's going to carry on. So that's kind of what's in the pile at the moment. Uh, looking for what's actually going to happen. This is my brain dart. For those of you that have already been watching uh, the series, that will be no news to you at all. You'll notice that it has a crossfire at the back. Um, so it uh, has a run cam hybrid camera at the front. Brain FPV, guts in the middle, uh, running iNav. Now, iNav... The latest versions of iNav can do some pretty smart stuff and uh, this is going to be a great plane for it. So stay tuned with that. I've done loads of RD plane builds recently, uh, but as I mentioned in the introduction from last weekend, uh, this is uh, going to be a modern iNav build. So follow along, even if you're going to be building something else, the iNav steps are still all relevant for the latest versions. The other series that I'm going to start creating this month is one that's going to be for Patreons. Uh, that's going to be about actually creating YouTube content and being a YouTube creator. Uh, lots of interest in that from the Patreon community. So that will be a benefit for those guys. But I'll start that this month. Uh, first video I'll be talking about why bother and why you should do it and things to uh, think about if you're going to. Um, there's going to be videos on OpenTX and also iNav tips and tricks as usual. So stay tuned for all of those as I kind of get some great questions in from you. Uh, it, some of them are just begging to be made into videos because I know if I'm getting the question from one person, there's probably a couple of hundred people around the world who are sat there with exactly the same problem. So if you do have an issue or a suggestion for a video, then do get in touch and pop a comment down below. Again, links to everything I've talked about is in the description, uh, but join me for the rest of the month where I'll work my way through the pile. I'm sure other things will be arriving for me to play with, uh, but make sure that you're subscribed, have the bell notification icon turned on, and let's have a fantastic January and a wonderful start to the new decade in radio control. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.